The Superstition Mountains, located just to the east of Phoenix in Arizona, are a popular location for those who enjoy hiking through such ruggedly beautiful terrain. They are also popular with researchers into the paranormal. Home as they are to tales of ghostly apparitions, bizarre aerial vehicles going to and from the mountains, as well as beastly creatures who appear as if out of nowhere. One particularly captivating, if disturbing, encounter involved a woman local to the area, given the name Angie in the report. At some time in March 2000, Angie was hiking in the mountain range, something she did often. It was a particularly hot afternoon with the sun beating down on the terrain below. In fact, the reflection of the sun on a shiny object near the edge of a canyon caught Angie's attention. She went over to examine the object, realizing it was a piece of white quartz. She quickly broke the quartz out of the ground and decided to begin her way back to the car. She stopped near the entrance of a cave several moments later in order to take a drink of water. After doing so, she knelt to put her water back in her bag. As she was getting back to her feet, however, she noticed a figure standing directly in front of her. At first, she thought it was a person wearing a silly Halloween-type mask. However, after looking at the face for several more seconds, she suddenly gasped in shock. It wasn't a mask, but a human being with the head of a lizard. She began to scream before everything went black. The next thing she knew, she was sitting behind the wheel of her moving car, and it appeared to be much later than mid-afternoon. What's more, she was driving it, although not at all aware of how she was doing so. This realization immediately brought her to full alertness. Confused and tired, she drove straight home. As soon as she arrived at her apartment, she ran into the shower and remained under the hot water for several hours, constantly scrubbing at her body in an effort to clean it, although she didn't understand why or from what. The following day, she called in sick to where she worked at a local pet store and remained in her apartment alone for several days. She couldn't shake the notion that something profoundly terrible had happened to her in the mountains, although she couldn't begin to understand what. She would find herself staring into space, contemplating the bizarre figure and then of waking behind the wheel of her moving car again and again and again. After several days, she did finally return to work, still disturbed by the incident, but undoubtedly not quite as fragile. However, when a customer brought a lizard into the store, she felt a sudden surge of horror run through her, so much so that she left the store immediately and returned home. In truth, she was frightened as much by her reaction to the lizard as she was to the actual creature. She knew something monstrous had taken place in the mountains that afternoon, and realized that if she wanted to put the incident behind her, she had to attempt to recover those seemingly repressed memories. After confiding of the encounter to a close friend, they recommended a person who could hypnotically regress her and ultimately unlock the events of that fateful afternoon. She would undergo several different regression sessions, and the revelations they would lead to were both fascinating and chilling in equal measure. After blacking out in front of the cave, she said she had awoken inside a large cavernous base. She could hear sounds that she would liken to soft barking or chirping all around her, and she attempted to sit up to see what they might be. However, when she did, she realized she was held fast in a bizarre jelly-like substance. She did, though, manage to sit up enough to see several of the strange lizard-faced creatures who were in the rocky chamber with her. She would elaborate on how their faces were both human but that of a reptile at the same time, and how their eyes had a brilliant and unnerving glow to them. Before she could take in any more detail, she felt something cold touch her head. And moments later, she was unconscious. When she next awoke, she was laying on a table in a different room. This one was oval-shaped. And as her eyes darted around in an attempt to make sense of her new surroundings, she noticed several pipes coming from the roof with strange sack-like balloons hanging from them. She stared at them, noticing that something was moving 
inside this sack, something that was alive. She forced her focus away from the monstrosity above her and in doing so noticed for the first time that she was completely naked. She also noticed that several of the reptilian beings were again in the room with her. One of these creatures took steps toward her. Before she could begin to protest or put up any kind of fight, another figure fired a blue light toward her. As soon as it hit her, she blacked out once more. Following this, the next thing she would recall was of waking up behind the wheel of her moving vehicle. However, while she had no memory of any procedures, she had the distinct sense that attempts were made to impregnate her with a reptilian entity. There are perhaps several details that are worth highlighting that resonate with other similar reports of reptilian encounters. The overall description as human looking except for the face, particularly the glowing eyes, is something often seen in other reports. Perhaps most intriguing is the fact that the incident took place at the entrance to a cave. A great many encounters and sightings of reptilian creatures seem to happen near or in cave systems, and these other accounts come from all over the world. Might reptilian entities reside in the superstition mountains of Arizona? And if so, might other similar mountain ranges across the United States and indeed around the world also contain similar reptilian bases? Perhaps of most concern, what should we make of the notion of attempts to impregnate their victims? Is this an attempt to colonize the planet with extraterrestrial hybrids, as some researchers insist to be the case? Might the unsettling sacks Angie had witnessed on the ceiling that appeared to have something alive inside them be connected to such a seemingly unimaginable program? And where might grey aliens, entities that are typically associated with such abduction cases, fit into all of this? Do they work alongside these reptilian creatures or do they operate independently and toward their own agenda? Just asking that question adds another layer to the already nuanced and complex arena in which the abduction phenomena resides. Might there be some truth to the assertions that have swirled for some time that discrete battles for control of the earth and the human population are taking place right now under our collective noses? Might those battles include reptilians, grey aliens and even elements of our own governments? It's a grim prospect and some would say preposterous. Of that there is no doubt. And yet, was Angie abducted by reptilian creatures, alien or otherwise, who inhabit the Superstition Mountains? And were attempts made to impregnate her as part of some ominous hybridization program? And was she targeted by these entities? Or was her apparent abduction one of chance and opportunism? Is it even possible that other encounters have taken place since, perhaps without even Angie's knowledge? After all, many alien abductees often find they are abducted on more than one occasion. It is lastly interesting to note that many who live in the area and have claimed to have known Angie state that she has not once wavered from her version of events. And if her claims are true, even in part, then that would be a grave concern for all of us.